Hey, welcome. In this problem, we are going to determine the mass density of an unknown liquid using the information that we learned about floating objects. So if you remember from the last video, we found this relationship between the volume of fluid that gets displaced when an object is floating, not submerged, but floating inside a body of liquid and that volume of displaced liquid is equal to the mass density of the object divided by the mass density of the fluid times the volume of the object. And another way to write this is simply the volume of the fluid that gets displaced times the mass density of the fluid is equal to the volume of the object times the mass density of the object. So I just rewrote it a different way because we'll need this uh, later in this video. But again, the important thing to remember here is that the volume of the fluid that gets displaced for a floating object is really equal to the volume of the object times the ratio between the mass density of the object and the mass density of the fluid. So in this video, we have two different cases that we're going to look at. And in both cases, we have this wooden block that's of uniform composition. It has the same mass density in both cases. And when we place this block in a body of water, we can measure out that the block is submerged about 5.8 centimeters. So the block goes down about 5.8 centimeters from the top of the fluid. Now, if we take the same block and we move it into this other body of liquid that we don't know what it is. So the first case, the body of liquid is water. In this case, the liquid is unknown, and we're trying to figure out what the mass density of that unknown liquid is. And when we put that same block inside of this liquid, we see that it only gets submerged about 4.6 centimeters, so a little bit less than if we put it in water. So immediately, I actually know that the mass density of this liquid is going to be a little bit higher than the mass density of the water, simply because the block does not get pushed down as far as it does when it's placed inside of water. So the question states, what is the mass density of this unknown liquid? Well, before we get to that, let's actually start off with as many of the knowns that we have for this problem. In case A, we know the mass density of the water is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. And in case B, the mass density is unknown. Now, in case A, we know that a certain amount of water gets displaced. So I'm going to say the volume of the fluid, in this case it's water, is going to be some volume. Well, how do we determine what the volume of the fluid that got displaced was? Well, we know that the amount of fluid for case A that got displaced is really the volume of the amount of the object that is beneath the surface of the water. So we're talking about this volume right here. And if we looked at the top of this block, so if we looked at the top of this block, and I just called the cross-sectional area of the top of the block. So we can assume that the top of it is either a rectangle or a square. And if we looked at the top, we can call the top cross-sectional area just area A. So whatever that area A is, that's the cross-sectional area when you look at this block from above. Now the volume of fluid that got displaced really is that area times the amount that the block has moved down below the surface of the water. And in this case, that is 5.8 centimeters. Now in case B of the unknown liquid, it's the same block. So the cross-sectional area at the top is still A, but this time the volume is that same A times 4.6 centimeters because that's how much the block has submerged. Now in both cases, we know that there is some sort of buoyant force acting to the top of the block or, or upwards on the block. And we know that the block has some sort of weight, which I'll just call M naught G. So M naught G is just the mass of the block times gravity. That gives us weight. And in both cases, we know that the weight of the block doesn't change. So in both cases, it's still mass times gravity. But the buoyant forces are going to be different simply because we have different amounts of volume of liquid that got displaced. 
Now we know a couple more things. We know that the block is exactly the same in both cases. So I know that the volume of the block does not change between both cases. And I know that the mass density of the block does not change in both cases. So really, v naught and rho naught for the block are exactly the same in both cases. What really changes is the volume of the fluid and the mass density of the fluid in two different cases. Those two values are different for both cases. Now, if you look at this equation, we can see that the volume of the fluid times the mass density of the fluid must equal the volume of the object times the mass density of the object. And if you don't know where this relationship is coming from, you can go ahead and watch the video before this one, and that will explain where this relationship is coming from. But in any case, for case A, we know that the volume of the fluid times the mass density of the fluid, in this case it's water, has to equal the mass density of the object times the volume of the object. And in case B, it's similar. We have the volume of the fluid times the mass density of this unknown liquid. And that must equal, again, the mass density of the block times the volume of the block, the total volume of the block. And from this, you can see that this P-naught, V-naught term appears the same in both cases. And that makes sense, right? Because the mass density and the volume of the actual block does not change. So what we could do is we could set these two values equal to one another. Now, for case A, the volume of the fluid that got displaced was area times 5.8 centimeters times the mass density of water, which is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. And that equaled rho naught V naught. And for case B, the volume of the fluid was area times 4.6 centimeters times the mass density of the unknown liquid. And that was equal to rho naught V naught, right, of the block. So these two terms right here are equal. So what I can really do is set these two relationships equal to one another. In other words, rho naught V naught and rho naught V naught are equal. So I can set this term equal to this term. And when we do that, we end up with this equation right here. And you can see that the common terms in this equation are this area terms, right? The blocks are the same. And what we're really left with is the submerged depth in water times the mass density of water is equal to the submerged depth in the unknown liquid times the mass density of the unknown liquid. And in this equation, there's only one unknown. So we can actually just plug this into our calculator and solve for rho liquid, the unknown liquid. And that turns out to be a about 1261 kilograms per meter cubed. So you can see that the mass density of this unknown liquid is actually a little bit higher than the mass density of the water. And that makes sense, right? Because when we plug in the block to this unknown liquid, the block does not submerge as deep as it does for this water case. So there you go, the mass density of this unknown liquid we found to be about 1261 kilograms per meter cubed.